Welcome back to Redstone with Dave and Baker. All right, this is uh, this is looking like the most complex um, setup that we've had so far. Is yeah, this, is this, this took me a little while. Is this still technically redstone? Because I see a lot going on here. <laughs> <laughs> there is less redstone, but something I feel like I should have explained earlier is that because there's so many t awesome tutorials and so many smart people out there in Minecraft already. I think the main point of this series is so that you can do simple things yourself. And then if you make a tutorial, you know enough to be able to debug whatever is in the tutorial. So if you're like, oh, hey, this thing broke in the update from this tutorial. But because I know a little bit about redstone, I can just swap the piston over here and add a tick to the repeater. And now it'll work in the next version. All right, cool. Well, that sounds good. What are we... Uh... What are, what are we doing first here? Comparators and containers. We got some yeah. chests. Well, the plan was hoppers. Okay. And then saw a post on Reddit that wanted stuff about comparators. And then I realized they were really close together, so I just did both. And this is going to be a lot of videos about this. Awesome. Okay. All right. So, um, actually, I'm going to go over here because... The first part about comparators will be a little bit of review. Okay. We're, we're, if oh, you remember when we were over here, <laughs> right? when we were uh, over here doing yes. inputs, we learned a little bit about how comparators work and how if you fill up the chest, it slowly, the comparator emits more redstone signal as you go. Okay. And then how it can also detect output from command blocks. Right. I do remember that. Yeah. So... We're going to be doing a huge extension of this today and learning a ton more about all of the awesome stuff that these comparators can do. So, if you cool. would be so kind as to click this sign. Click me to be teleported for a more detailed comparator area. Ah, look at that. And we're back. <laughs> yeah. So... As, as, you've, as we've shown just the... A little bit of lag. The more you put into these, the further the signal gets. So if you watch behind the chest, if you want to watch behind the chest and you can see the signal slowly growing as I put more and more stacks of items into the chest. And then as soon as I fill up the chest, which is taking a little while, because chests are extremely large inventories. <laughs> it, it is growing. You're almost there. Uh, a little bit. Ah, the light just went on. Yeah. Okay. So the chest is full. And so you get that much output. Gotcha. All right. Okay. So it, it's, again, it's a fraction. So this chest has 27. And then there's 15, so basically it's, okay, well, how full is the chest? And then you, I believe the math is something, because thing is to 27. Oh, well, that's stack. So it's basically total amount of items, and then the, however many that can be divided by 15. So the okay. total, actually, I'm going to use, so 27... I'm 64. I love the little JavaScript plugin we have. Mm -hmm. So 1,728 items um, can be fit into a chest. Okay. And then if we divide that by 15, you get 115. So every 115 items will increment this by one. Okay, so gotcha. If I take all of this out and then I put in a stack and then another stack into the chest turns it to 128, right. which gets us two output uh, because that's more than 115. So the first 115 is just one output, and then the next 115 is two. So if I take a little bit of items out, now it goes back down to one because we're below 115. And now I will put us at, let's see, so. So now there are a hundred items in there. Okay. And, that's, and that's if I one. add, 
So we need another 15? Yeah. Okay. 15, oh, and I might need just one more. I I also could have been counting wrong. <laughs> it's okay, we're going to figure this out right now. <laughs> yes, we on, are. On the job, there we there go, we just lit up. There so we go. Oh. It's so 64 and 60, so that's actually 124 items. Okay. okay. So 124 JS 124 times 15 gives us 8 100. Oh, that's because there's um it it doesn't give full output when it's there's just like a little bit of wiggle room there because it okay. has to give full output only when it's completely full. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So if sense. you have one item missing, it has to give one less so that you can always detect if it's totally full. And then there's a compact way to detect whether or not it's full, which we'll get into because comparators can let you subtract signals. So comparators are really cool. Sub subtract signals? Compare like... signals. So... What does that mean? <laughs> well... We'll be getting into it a little bit later. Okay. When we get to the minecart loaders and unloaders, but basically, if I have a comparator here, and I have this signal compared to this signal, and the light, redstone lamp, and I turn this on you'll notice that the comparator actually keeps the amount of signal that was sent into it. So this is 14 power. Okay. So I extend this. It'll actually go exactly 14 blocks. So oh, interesting. you go okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, because it outputs a 14 strength thing put signal because that was is what it was inputted. So if we move the lever back one, so I'll mark where the redstone was here. Okay. So if we move the le this lever back by one and do that, you'll notice that now it doesn't power this lamp. It goes one back. I gotcha. Okay, cool. So, but what we can do, we can have the signal compare and then use the subtract mode. So right now, it's, it's basically comparing these two signals. And because the signal from the side is stronger than the signal behind it, it's not outputting any. But as soon as I remove that, it turns oh. on. And if I back this lever up further and I turn this on and then so right now it compared the two signals and it determined that this one was stronger this this the one behind it is the stronger signal so it takes in 15 and then it outputs 15 because this is the stronger one so it goes 15 blocks so remember how this one was 14 it went one more and so now it's at 15 right so what we, you can also do is turn on subtract mode. So now it's only outputting four signal strength because this is at signal strength 15 and, that, and then this input is at signal strength 11. 15 minus 11 equals four. Okay. And so this lever outputs 15 strength and then it goes to 14, 13, 12, 11. So that's how you know this is 11. And so what you can do from that is if you only want to detect when a chest is full, you can have a chest here, and then you can have this either on subtract or non-subtract, it doesn't really matter, and then you have this here. So right now, this will only output if the signal from the chest is greater than or equal to 15. So the chest has to be full or this won't work. And I'll use a smaller container so it's easier to fill. 
So notice no output still, no output still, no output still, no output still, and then still no output. As So now as soon as I put one more item into this hopper mm -hmm. to fill it completely, it turns on. Oh, off. yeah, look at that. Okay. And so then we could also move this lever back by one. And now it outputs. And we could take out a stack, and now it fails. Okay. We put in half a stack, it fails. And then if we put in just a little bit more, but not quite filling up the whole thing, we get four. This is now, this hopper has 14 signal strength. So that goes into the comparator. And we get 14 signal strength, which is one less than 15, which we had up here. Right. OK. All so right. you can use the power and then this comparator to test whether or not a container is full in a really, really small area. Gotcha. OK. Good explanation. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's kind of dirty to leave this here, but I, I mean, I probably should have had something along those lines over there. And so then this hopper is basically just to show that it is a fraction of the container. So if I put a stack of items in this chest, and then I put a stack of items in the hopper, you get three output with the hopper, three signal strength with the hopper, but you only get one with the chest because the chest is bigger. So right. the one stack in the hopper is occupying a fifth of the space because there's five slots. And if you notice what's one fifth of 15, it's three and it outputs three signal strength. Oh, okay. So it is like a ratio. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, I, I was trying to explain that with the chest and it doesn't quite look much look. Yeah, that so, makes sense. Okay. But we could fill up a third of the chest by filling up only the top row. So as you can see, there's three rows. And if we fill up the whole top row, that's a third of the chest. So we should get five signal strength. If you go up here and count one, two, three, four, and five redstones. And it's curved a little bit just so that I can um, sort of compact this. I'm using the I'm um, sorry, uh, what was that you're using? I, I, it's curved and it looks kind of weird just so that I can fit this all without having to extend. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. So, so then if I give myself some activator reels and some minecart with chest, it can detect how much is in a minecart with chest. So if I put this minecart with chest and I put in a bunch of quartz blocks, Nothing happened. Oh, noes. Why could this be? <laughs> the minecart is filled and comparators can detect things. It's a really annoying thing because you have to have a detector rail there. Oh, there's a special rail that's a detector rail? So, yeah. So I, I should actually explain these. But a detector rail basically outputs redstone signal strength as long as there's a minecart on it. So if I normal rails, this, and this, and yeah, and then I have here, um, and let me lamp. So as the cart goes over the detector rail, just bump it, it lights up, and then when it's not on the detector rail, it turns. So I could also just place one on. Okay, um, so, so you either, you I could just place one, so now it detects that. But a detector rail is also what triggers a comparator. So if I put a detector rail here, put a minecart with chest on here, and then I put some quartz in it, we get our output. Okay, now over here, it didn't look like you had anything inside the chest, or did you? And I just didn't, you took it out before I saw. Sorry? Um, when, when we were over uh, at this exhibit, um, yes. was there anything inside <laughs> of the, uh, the chess when you had No. Them? So okay. without a comparator, it just detects whether or not there's a cart on them. So I see. I see. if I was to get some other type of cart, like a normal mine cart, and then put it on here, it still we still get our output. 
Okay. Okay. So the, the comparator. But has... then is if I move it off, so it just detects whether or not there's a card there. It's a detector rail. I see. But you need the detector rail to activate the comparator. And that's the other thing. Comparators can detect through one block as long as they're facing the right way. Gotcha. So I could also have this hopper here and then that there. And this would still work the same way. So if I put a stack in here, we get an output of three because I filled up a fifth. And then I could do this. And then this signal strength is stronger, so it can't. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... Now you understand how detector rails work. Um, detector rails are really only used in loading and unloading systems and some sort of complicated um, sort of like minecart train stations, which might be some sort of practical use when we decide to do a minecart episode. Okay, cool. <laughs>